This is the Upper Murray, in the Snowy Valleys. It's Ngurrigo country. It's man from Snowy River country. It's where I grew up and where my family is soon returning to. On the farm, Mother Nature is profound. Seasons are lived. Resources are tangible. Climate change and human impact is evident. The path of the sun is ingrained in your psyche. When I dream at night, I know which way north is. I'm not kidding. Our farm runs the width of the valley, which is oriented north to south. The change in sunrise and sunset angles throughout the year is obvious. The hills either side cast long shadows that exaggerate seasonal changes. My family take pride in resourcefulness and despise wastefulness. My dad built these stables. Everything you see is salvaged. Every piece has a history. Trusses from their first cottage home, timber slab walls from a long abandoned slab hut. Even the latches are made from old horseshoes. On the land, the plants and animals don't care who you are or what you know. They only react to what you do. It's easy to find yourself, harder to lie to yourself. It's unavoidable to live the results of your actions. Out here, you're a tiny part of a huge functioning ecosystem. Yet, if you want to change anything, it's up to you to be that change. As an architect, I am a tiny part of a huge functioning ecosystem. There's things I'd like to see change. So every day, I try to be the change I want to see. In our new suburbs, the seasons are much less lived. The path of the sun is often forgotten. These northern facades could be windows with eaves, automatically shaded in summer and with sun flooding the extent of the rooms during frosty Canberra winters. New houses in Canberra are the biggest in Australia and therefore practically the world. Let that sink in. How can we despair about the cost of building, build quality or energy efficiency while building the biggest new houses in the world? But let's not sit back as architects and point fingers. Let's take some responsibility. Let's engage in a genuine way. Let's be the change we want to see. Architects are professionally trained problem solvers, yet we don't usually see ourselves that way, and neither do the public. I'm the principal architect at Lighthouse Architecture and Science. We're a multidisciplinary firm of architects and scientists led by a director who is a building scientist. I met Glenn Merkett as a student and he said to me that he never set out to be extraordinary or do extraordinary things. He just wanted to do simple things extraordinarily well. This struck a deep chord with me. There's a lot of poorly considered and executed cheap housing. There's also a lot of really brilliant, bigger budget architectural homes. I'm fascinated by the gap in the middle. My practice of architecture has largely pursued the question of how we close the space between these two. We can't begin without being informed. We've researched the project home industry, collected costing data, simulated thermal performance on each of our projects, and physically tested and tracked them as built. This research and evidence is treated as a tool used to inform a holistic and critical design approach. In some ways, it's about combining intelligence and simplicity. But that's just step one. What change are we really achieving by helping a handful of clients one-on-one -on -one every year? 
To be the change we want to see, we have to communicate effectively. In a language the public and the industry understands, we have to turn up with the data. We have to open doors for people to experience something better. And we have to engage in a sincere manner. I believe there's also immense opportunity to better prepare our future architects for these challenges. Last year, I self-published a book, 101 Things I Didn't Learn in Architecture School. It's like a handbook for being a young architect in Australia. This led to a resource website, myfirstarchitecturejob.com, and then a membership platform called The Architect Project. Instead of waiting to build knowledge, working as a graduate in an isolated firm, members can more effectively bridge the gap between study and practice, learning from architects, consultants and trades from across Australia. I've learned to stop prioritising trying to know it all and instead prioritise collaboration and meaningful networks that provide valuable collective knowledge. So what's my message to young architects? Engage in a manner that is sincere, humble and collaborative. And ask yourself, what can you see that you want to change? <laughs>